Ferguson isn't happy that he has to properly report the millions of dollars that he has transferred from his last attorney general campaign into his current Washington state governor's race campaign. Now, we've reported on this before, but this story is now having an unlikely new chapter in Spokane, of all places, and I wanted to let you know what is happening because the media never will. Now, before I do that, don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and share this video. If you think I'm wrong, crazy, or need to know something else, leave your comments below. I read them all, and I respond to most of them as I can. Besides that, when you have a video channel like this one, which annoys the powerful and exposes the corrupt, they do their best to convince Google and others to shadow ban our content, so feel free to share it far and wide. So back to A.G. Ferguson, his eternal rapacious quest for more power, and his anger and frustration at the Public Disclosure Commission for daring to hold him accountable. So let's get to Spokane. As most viewers know, I have caught more politicians, PACs, judges, and others in Washington State breaking the law more than any other individual. You can see the link below detailing all the cases, fines, lawsuits, investigations, and other details, providing you the backstory. So basically so far, I've caught, exposed, and confirmed sanctions on 220 of them. Now, one of the recent complaints that I filed last month was against a minor Spokane City Councilman named Zach Zapone. Now I've linked to the complaint and the public disclosure case file down below, and I file complaints like this frequently, so this one really didn't stand out to me other than the blatant legal violations with unreported funds and etc. I mean, this guy was a serial violator of Washington State's campaign finance laws. He has been sanctioned before, and he is a strong supporter of the Washington State Democratic Party. And again, nothing unusual here. However, last week things changed a bit in this case. First of all, the merit of my original complaint was solid on the facts and it was very well documented. Nobody has disputed this. However, the PDC had recently changed their interpretation of how campaigns basically transferring funds between races for different office were required to report the information differently in a way that would essentially prevent double dipping with maxed out campaign donors to different campaigns. And most significantly, this interpretation change would apply to the Zipponi case as well, as well as these others. So the PDC staff essentially added this kind of new part to communication about his violations so that as he struggled to kind of figure out what happened to his cash and where it went and where it came from, he would also have to comply with this new part of the interpretation. Now, while I appreciate the addition to my complaint, the original violations that I uncovered have always been illegal since at least 1972, and they were, in my opinion, more significant than the PDC staff addition. Sometimes staff will add violations that I miss in my original complaints. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen, and I appreciate the thoroughness when that is done. So here's how it got strange. First of all, the PDC Commission was on a state tour and they held a public hearing in Spokane rather than in Olympia, which is traditional. Now, I generally support this because it takes the mystery out of the hearings in Olympia, kind of being out of reach, and it ex kind of exposes the process to bigger audiences. The Zappone case was one of the cases that they heard. And it's one of maybe 15 cases that I currently have filed with the PDC recently that are right now under investigation. What is odd is how the actual hearing itself went and the fact that Bob Ferguson paid Pacific Law Group to come out and represent him at the public comment period and attempted to influence the PDC on the Zappone case for his own purposes. Now, to be clear, Zappone is just a minor political player, even in Spokane. Nobody really cares about him, but he can be useful at times for the bigger players in politics, and this was one of those cases. A.G. Ferguson kind of stands to lose some very serious cash if the PDC forces him to go back and properly report the $1.2 million of transferred funds that he made from his uh, A.G. race, basically, to his current governor race. And this is likely to kind of cost his campaign a lot of cash because previous maxed out donors can't double dip. Ferguson wants them to double dip, so he wants to set precedent at the PDC by using the Zappone case decision to basically help Ferguson in his situation. Now keep in mind, however, while Ferguson's paying Pacifica Law Group's attorney to argue on his behalf, it also looks like the AG employee who works for Ferguson, remember, but in theory he kind of represents the PDC itself, this guy is also kind of putting the case in a favorable light for Zappone. But there is a real potential for a conflict here because this guy is only employed at the allowance and the discretion of Ferguson. In fact, the whole hearing seems tilted in Zappone's favor on this one element of the PDC case against Zappone, 
And they entirely ignored the more fundamental violations that my original complaint actually uncovered. Now, I know this seems like a tempest in a teapot. Another minor, forgettable politician breaks the law. And I catch him breaking the law, and he's trying to pretend uh, that he didn't mean to break the law. However, when the final decision on this case has the potential to unleash an extra million dollars or more for Ferguson in the governor's race, it actually is a bigger deal than anyone realizes. Now, anyway, I wanted you to know, I doubt many people are paying attention, but this is actually a real issue. It is happening right now. The PDC has theoretically not yet decided what they will do, but this case is important to watch because it can have a real impact on the governor's race next year. Ferguson will do anything he can to save Zappone from his law-breaking ways, as long as it helps Ferguson get more campaign cash himself. Now, thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps you better understand some of the machinations that kind of go on in local politics in Washington state. Remember, we wouldn't even be talking about this if I hadn't been paying attention and filed the complaint against Zappone in the first place. I'm happy to put on classes to teach others, even you, how to do the same thing. There's no reason that I get to have all the fun. The more who can actually do this, I think, the better off we all will be. So in the end, and as always, I want to remind everyone that the future belongs to those who show up, and you can only have an impact on the future if you try.